Channel 25 Weekend. Good afternoon and welcome to News Channel 25 Weekend. I'm Tiana McLeese. Sarah Talbert has the day off. Flood waters are still in Cedar Rapids. Iowa City has begun to recede and some of the city's displaced residents are returning home to see the flood damage firsthand. But ABC's Marty Johnson reports the situation downriver is still getting worse. Coming up next, more aftershocks caused difficulty in finding the missing after the Japanese quake that shook that island yesterday. Plus, the Afghan president has a warning of words to the Taliban hiding across the Pakistani border. Keep it here. You're watching News Channel 25 Weekend. News Channel 25's Tiana McLeese is outside the Methodist Children's Home with how many of them are now reunited with their family. Tiana? Well, that's right, Ann and Bruce. I'm standing here outside of the Waco Methodist Children's Home where we've just been told that nine of the 44 polygamist ranch children who've been in foster care here since April have now been released to the custody of their parents and have gone home. Well, that's right, Jay. We're here on the hillside of Topo Canyon, an area that firefighters say they have to keep a very close eye on. And here's why. If you look up this hillside, you'll see it's full of dry brush. Brush so dry, you can literally just pull it off, and it'll crumble right in your fingertips. Now, that's a dangerous situation, because if you look here behind me, there are homes less than 100 feet away, and that they would be directly in the path of a fire. Well, that's right, Ann. I'm standing here in the Market Heights parking lot right at the corner of US 190 and FM 2410. Now, this 82 acres of retail space is set to be the largest structure in Harker Heights, and that has played a key role in the time it's taking to get it finished. I'm Tiana McLeese in Glendale, where daytime drama strips down for Obama. That story coming up. I'm Tiana McLeese in Eagle Rock, where neighbors take to the streets to fight violence. That story coming up. We're in downtown L.A. where the economic slowdown is really being felt here in the Garment District. Business is down about 30 percent, and while it may look crowded, last year at this time there were twice as many people out back to school shopping. Good evening, I'm Tiana McLeese in the Newswatch newsroom. A massive march through Highland Park tops the news tonight. I talked with residents there who say they're fed up with crime, and now they're taking action to stop it. They came by the hundreds, politicians, police, and parents like Louisa Prudhomme. Her son was shot to death in a home invasion robbery eight years ago. She says marching in this community rally called Peace in the Northeast will hopefully bring about change in the community. I hope so. I hope they make a difference. I know that the whole thing is to um, end the gang violence that's going on here. The two-mile march through Highland Park is the result of a rash of murders in this neighborhood. Five killings in the last month, including the execution-style murder of a 14-year-old girl. It's something Mayor Antonio Villaraigosa calls a stunning setback. Crime is down all across the city, including this area. But uh, there's still too many instances of gratuitous gang and gun violence. People from all walks of life showed up today to march with this community, but there's one key group missing. That group has been the source of many of the problems. That group is local gang members. But you know what? It's those kids who are going to see this march today and say, what are they doing? Oh, peace. That's right. Longtime resident Dr. Stanley Moore says this march sends a powerful message to at-risk youth. And what would you like young children to take away from this message you're giving today? That they have people who care about them and are willing to walk in the hot sun. Okay. Now, organizers say they do plan to hold another march next month. In other news, you may notice a unique new ad campaign in your favorite fashion magazine. It features daytime drama stars stripping down to their underwear. The stars told me they want their fans to know just who they're supporting for president and why their fans should, too. It was lights, camera, action for some of daytime television's sexiest stars. They stripped down to their underwear in a show of support for their presidential pick, Barack Obama. Celebrities like the bold and the beautiful star, Leslie Kay, had her picture taken in the Obama 08 undies. It's interesting. I think it's a genius way to show our support and to get people out there and involved. The briefs and tank tops sport a silhouette of the senator's face on the front and 08 on the backside. Trendy L.A. underwear designer Andrew Christian says he loves Barack Obama's bare bones approach to politics and that is exactly why he created the undergarments. It sort of symbolizes the naked truth of um, his campaign. He speaks his mind, 
um, and just says it like it is. So I made the correlation there between being naked and being in underwear. Well, as you can see, I am brave enough to don the Obama 90, but as for the underwear, I think I'll leave that to the pros. For the customers, $5 from every sale will be donated to Obama's campaign. I just really wanted to do something that paid tribute to him that wasn't, um, you know, too risque or too out there. But at $30 a pop, you'll have to be a big Obama fan to pitch in. Blake Barris of Days of Our Lives says he's hoping his fans will follow his lead. Even if it has a little bit of impact, it would be it would be cool if they they knew that we were we were supporting him and that they should too. You can find those underwear online at andrewchristian.com. Well, that's going to do it here for us tonight. Thank you for watching News Watch. I'm Tiana McLeese.